Hope you have your Bibles this morning. We're going to be looking in the, the book of 2 Kings, 2 Kings chapter 18, to start with. The, the title is, When Trouble Comes to Your Door. I was realizing as we were singing that last song, Horatio Spafford, I, I believe, wrote that song, and he wrote it. His, his wife and children were all lost at sea and drowned. And uh, when he was taking the boat, the captain said, this is, this is about where the wreck would have taken place. And uh, it was then that this, th that thought came to him and he wrote the song, It Is Well With My Soul. Uh, we all go through trouble some more significant than others. Uh, trouble comes to everyone. Yeah, it, when you have trouble, you're, you're not the only one. Sometimes we have trouble because of our own sin and even sometimes just our own carelessness. We'll do something and, and man, we'll, we'll uh, be in trouble because of it. Sometimes we struggle or we uh, are in trouble because of the sins of others. You know, someone hurts you or robs you. Uh, sometimes just because of the sinful world we live in. You know, the Bible says in Romans 8 that the, the whole world, the whole earth groans because of the, the curse of sin. Sometimes God's will is involved in our trouble. You know, you think about some of the people in the scriptures, Joseph, Daniel, Jesus. You know, they were doing the will of God and, and uh, struggled because of it. Today I want us to look at two kings, Hezekiah and Asa. And in 2 Kings chapter uh, 18, Hezekiah is being threatened. He, he's the king of Israel, king of Judah, and uh, his nation is being threatened by Assyria. Just read a couple of verses. We're not going to emphasize their threats, but verse 29, for instance. This is the king of Assyria. He says, Thus saith the king, Let not Hezekiah deceive you, for he shall not be able to deliver you out of his hand. Neither let Hezekiah make you trust in the Lord, saying, the Lord will surely deliver us, and this, sh this city shall not be delivered into the hand of the king of Assyria. So he's, he's threatening them, saying, we're going we're gonna to come and, and, and do you damage. Verse 33, Hath any of the gods of the nations delivered at all his land out of the hand of the king of Assyria? He said, you don't stand a chance. We're coming for you, and uh, we're going to hurt you. Now, I want you to look at his response in uh, 2 Kings 19, verse 1. It came to pass when King Hezekiah heard it that he rent his clothes and covered himself with sackcloth and went into the house of the Lord. And he sent Eliakim, which was over the household of Sheb and Shebna the scribe, and the elders of the priests, covered with sackcloth, to Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos. And they said unto him, Thus saith Hezekiah, This day is a day of trouble and of rebuke and blasphemy. For the children are come to the birth, and there is not strength to bring forth. It may be the Lord thy God will hear all the words of Rabshakeh, whom the king of Assyria his master hath sent to reproach the living God, and will reprove the words which the Lord thy God hath heard. Wherefore, lift up thy prayer for the remnant that are left. We just stop, stop reading there. Uh, Judah was in trouble physically. This, this was a physical danger that they were in. They were being threatened. And uh, I want you to notice, the first thing Hezekiah did is he went to the house of the Lord. It, oftentimes I've seen people who, when they're in trouble, they abandon the house of the Lord. And it, just, the, just the wrong response, you know. When, when trouble comes, uh, you need the Lord. We need the Lord. And uh, that's where Hezekiah went. And then he sent for a word from God. Uh, he sent for Isaiah. He sent some men, say, Take this message to Isaiah. Let him, let him know and, and let him tell us what God would have us to do. Now, we can go straight to God's word today. And, uh, uh, but they, they sent to Isaiah, the prophet. They wanted to hear what God had to say. And then uh, we'll see he began to pray. In, uh, he, he, he'd had all these threats already. And then he gets a threatening letter from, from Assyria. In um, uh, verse 9, at the end of the verse, it says, He sent messengers again unto Hezekiah. This is the, the king, Rabshakeh. 
And in verse 14, Hezekiah received the letter of the hand of the messengers. Here's the, uh, the message that the king has sent threatening them, saying that they're going to uh, attack them. Hezekiah received the letter of the hand of the messengers and read it. And Hezekiah went up into the house of the Lord and spread it before the Lord. And Hezekiah prayed before the Lord and said, O Lord God of Israel, which dwellest between the cherubims, thou art the God, even thou alone, of all the kingdoms of the earth. Thou hast made heaven and earth. Lord, bow down thine ear and hear. Open, Lord, thine eyes and see. And hear the words of Sennacherib, which hath sent him to reproach the living God. Would you stop there? Hezekiah is doing the right things here. You know, when, when trouble came, uh, he went to the house of the Lord. He, he sent for a word from God. Uh, he began to pray. Uh, you, you might say he, he trusted the Lord. Uh, what a blessing it is to see when, when people do the right thing. Uh, the, if, if you're in trouble, uh, a good place to go is to the Psalms. And uh, many of the Psalms have to do with uh, difficulties that, that people faced. In uh, Psalm 146, he says, Put not your trust in princes, nor in the Son of Man, in whom there is no help. <clears throat> Happy is he that hath the God of Jacob for his help, help, whose hope is in the Lord his God. You know, a lot of times when, when trouble comes, we turn to man. We turn to, to men's solutions. Uh, the Bible says we need to turn to the Lord. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, he says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. And lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Uh, we, need to, we need to go to the Lord about everything. Uh, I guess sometimes we think, oh, that's too little for the Lord. Uh, maybe, I hope not, but maybe sometimes we think, oh, that's too big for the Lord. Uh, listen, nothing's too big or too little. Uh, everything. The book of James, chapter 4 and, and verse 7, he says, Submit yourself therefore to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Be afflicted, and mourn, and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning, and your joy to heaviness. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. See, just like Hezekiah did, he humbled himself. He, he, he dealt with sin. He, he did the things that, that God said to do. He trusted the Lord. I think sometimes the problem is that we, we think God has to obey us. You know, a situation comes up and we say, well, God, here's the solution, and we want you to do this. Instead of going to God and, like Hezekiah did, and, you know, just opening that letter before God. I think, you know, what, a, what an illustration of faith. He just opens the letter before God and says, Lord, you, you see the threats that he's making. Lord, help us. Show us what to do. Uh, don't trust your plans. Trust God's promises. Yeah, many times I've met people who have had a, a difficult time in their life and they prayed and asked God to do something and God didn't do it. Well, let me tell you something. There's a lot of things that God doesn't do that you're going to tell Him. But He's going to do what's right. And He's going to answer prayer. I know as a kid I didn't like this, but no is an answer. Sometimes God says no, and that's an answer. Even sometimes wait is an answer. We'll see is an answer. <laughs> uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of answers that God can give. Our trust is in the Lord. It's not in, uh, in our plans. It's in the Lord. And many times there's just things beyond that we don't see, we don't know. There's so many illustrations coming to my, my mind from Scripture. You, you know, you think of Joseph. I don't know what he prayed. You know, when, when his brothers sold him. Can you imagine your brother is selling you? Pazun, can you imagine selling Mang Bong into slavery? Oh, maybe you could. I don't know. <laughs> but can you imagine Joseph praying? You know, what's he going to pray? Lord, release me from, from slavery. What does God do? He puts him in prison. <laughs> Lord, release me from, from prison. You know, I don't know what he prayed. But, you know, as, you, as we see the end, we see God had a purpose. God had a purpose. Uh, we need to be careful we're not trusting our plans, but that we're trusting the Lord, trusting the promises of God. You know, there's just a basic truth that will help you through life. It's the fact that God is good. Do you believe that today? 
Uh, you know, there's a, a little prayer they used to teach children. God is good. God is great. Thank you for the food we ate. Uh, you know, a lot of people would not believe that. God is good. And we need to understand and believe that. And we need to understand and believe that we're not. The Bible says there's none good. Uh, it's interesting how, how God puts it in, uh, in the book of Romans, chapter 3. He says, let's see, verse 11, There's none that understandeth, there's none that seeketh after God. Do you realize that? If you have a desire to know the Lord, it's because the Lord is seeking you. That doesn't come from you. That comes from God. They are all gone out of the way. They are together become unprofitable. There's none that doeth good. No, not one. I'll guarantee you, if you ask people if they're going to go to heaven, 99 times out of 100, they'll say, yeah, I think I'll go to heaven. I've been good. Listen, we're calling God a liar when, when we say that. If, if you think being good is the way to heaven, well, good luck. <laughs> the Bible says that's not the way to heaven. Uh, we need to believe that God is good and that we're not. That'll change your life. <laughs> that simple truth. Psalm 100, he says, For the Lord is good, His mercy is everlasting, and His truth endureth to all generations. And you know, there's a corollary to the fact that God is good. God always has a good purpose. God always has a good purpose. Now, Romans 8, 28, We know that all things work together for good. To them that love God. To them that are the call according to His purpose. King Hezekiah, when, when trouble came, and this was physical trouble, and uh, we faced that. You know, medical situations, financial situations, uh, physical safety. You know, sometimes they're just a, uh, just a physical problem. Uh, our first response needs to be to turn to the Lord, not our last response. The other person I wanted us to see is in 2 Chronicles uh, chapter 15. And let me say, there's no way we're going to cover everything about trouble in uh, one, one message uh, this morning. But there's just a few simple things we can look at. Second Chronicles chapter 15 is King Asa. And I wanted to share both of these because in this situation, Judah was in trouble spiritually. This wasn't a physical problem. This wasn't a threat from uh, an attacking army. Uh, this, they were in trouble because they'd abandoned the Lord. Let me read 2 Chronicles 15, verses 1 through 4 to start with. And the Spirit of God came upon Azariah, the son of Oded, and he went out to meet Asa, and said unto him, Hear ye me, Asa, and all Judah and Benjamin. The Lord is with you while ye be with him. And if ye seek him, he will be found of you. But if ye forsake him, he will forsake you. Now for a long season Israel hath been without the true God and without a teaching priest and without law. But when they in their trouble did turn unto the Lord God of Israel and sought him, he was found of him, found of them. Now king Asa, spiritual trouble. When he became king, uh, I may sometimes call them Israel, but it was, in reality it was Judah, but uh, when spiritual trouble came, when he became king, even though they had abandoned the Lord, he brought them back. He turned to the Lord. He talks there in, in verse 4, When they in their trouble did turn unto the Lord God of Israel and sought him, he was found to them. You know, the thought came to me, where do I turn when I'm in trouble? Now, where do you turn when you're in trouble? Trouble is going to come. And... Uh, we need to make a decision ahead of time on what we're going to do. And, you know, the Bible indicates that we need to make a conscious turning to the Lord. And that's what Asa did. In, in Psalm 57, verse 1, the Bible says, Be merciful unto me, O God. Be merciful unto me, for my soul trusteth in thee. Yea, in the shadow of thy wings will I make my refuge until these calamities be overpassed. Some of you have been there where the, the calamities are coming and you just have to say, Lord, I'm just going to hide in the shadow of your wing. In uh, Psalm 56, verse 3, it says, What time I am afraid, I will trust in thee. I I've written in the margin of my Bible there, consciously turning to God. You know, when trouble comes, this should not 
be something that we do unconsciously. I, I, it's not something we need to, well, let me put it this way. We need to think about what we're doing. We need to consciously turn to the Lord. You know, when trouble comes, we need to say, I need to turn to the Lord and, and do it. Uh, Psalm 27 and, and verse 5, it says, For in the time of trouble he shall hide me in, in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me up upon a rock. Now, that's our safety. Now, that's where we need to turn. Well, how did he turn to the Lord? If you look there in, in uh, 2 Chronicles 15, verse 8, 2 Chronicles 15, 8 says, And when Asa heard these words, you know, the prophet had come and, and uh, laid the, the message on him, and the prophecy of Oded the prophet, he took courage and put away the abominable idols out of all the land of Judah and Benjamin, and out of the cities which he had taken from Mount Ephraim, and renewed the altar of the Lord that was before the porch of the Lord. Uh, one of the first things that Asa did is that he took courage. <laughs> and then he did something. You know, as, as Christian, if you're going to be a Christian, there's going to be times when it's going to take courage. Being a Christian means you're not going to be like everybody else. Now, if you're with a group of Christians, hopefully, you know, we have some, some unity there. But when you're out in the world, listen, most people are not going to commend you for living the Christian life. Uh, when they're all wanting to have a drink and you say, no, I don't drink. Man, they're, they're not going to like that because your being different condemns them. It takes courage. So first, Asa had to take his, his courage in hand and, and then he began to put away Judah's sin. You know, one of the first things that we need to do when spiritual trouble comes, we need to see, well, Lord, where am I not right with you? In verse 8, it said he began to put away the abominable idols. You know, the Bible says, Repent ye therefore and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out. God wants us to, to deal with sin. The interesting thing, the, the rest of that verse says, When the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. Listen, if you'll deal with sin, God will begin to refresh you. And... The reason we have so much inner turmoil is because of our sin and our selfishness. And if we'll begin to seek the Lord, we we'll begin to, to turn to the Lord, God promises that he'll, he'll bless us and He'll help us. You know, sometimes we can look around and, boy, there's, there's a lot of wicked people in the world. You know, there's people doing uh, just some terrible things. But you know, Jesus says that our sin is no better than theirs. Luke chapter 13, verses 2 and 3 there had been an incident happen in their day and in their, uh, their area that they were aware of. Yeah, that, that, that happens sometimes where something goes on, everybody knows about it. A bunch of people had been killed uh, by Pilate. Luke 13, verse 1, he says, There were some that were present at that season, some that told him of the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. Pilate had killed a bunch of people. Jesus answering said unto them, Suppose ye that those Galileans were sinners above all the Galileans because they suffered such things? I tell you nay, but except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. Listen, sin is sin. And the Bible says we're all sinners. You know, there's some where, you know, we see, oh, the, the terror and the, the awfulness of their sin because it's out in the open and, and it's, it's gotten worse and worse to where it's afflicting them and afflicting others. But listen, we're, we're all sinners before God. There's none of us that, that can say, I, I've never sinned. Uh, your sin's not better than mine. My sin's not better than yours. I mean, really, I guess if a sin was better, it'd be worse, in a sense. Uh, Asa began to put away sin. And that's such an important part of this thing of dealing with trouble, when there's spiritual trouble. And part of that putting away sin, in, in verse 8, was they began to worship the Lord. Okay, 15 and, and verse 8 uh, they renewed the altar of the Lord that was before the porch of the Lord. Verse 9, He gathered all Judah and Benjamin and the strangers with them out of Ephraim and Manasseh and out of Simeon. For they fell to him of Israel in abundance when they saw that the Lord his God was with him. 
You know what began to happen? As he began to call people back to the Lord, people said, I want to do that too. People began to, to join with them. Uh, he renewed the altars and others joined them. You know, maybe that's an area where that you need to take care of. Maybe you need to renew your worship for the Lord. You know, sometimes we get in a habit and we just kind of do things by rote. You know, maybe you go to church, maybe you pray, maybe you do this, but your heart's not in it. And maybe you need to renew that, that altar, that, that relationship with your God. Uh, he turned to the Lord by putting away Judah's sin, by worshiping the Lord, by renewing the altar. But the Bible uses another word there as well in verse 4 of uh, 2 Chronicles 15. It says, they sought him. He did turn unto the Lord God of Israel and sought him. Now, to me, that's a stronger word. You know, it's one thing to turn to somebody, but then it's another thing to seek them, to go after them, uh, to put your, to commit yourself to, to finding them. Uh, you've probably had it happen where you turn to somebody kind of hoping you'll have a conversation. But that's different than when you go to the door and you knock on their door and you say, uh, is John home? I've come to talk to him. You're seeking them out. And Isaiah said this. He said, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he's near. We need to seek the Lord. Do you remember the, the two blind men as Jesus went by? Uh, they said, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on us. They didn't just sit there and, and turn their, their face toward Jesus. They called out to him. Uh, they, they committed themselves to uh, to embarrassment possibly or rejection possibly but the, they sought the Lord and the way Asa and Judah sought the Lord uh, one was that they listened to God's word did you notice there in verse 8 when Asa heard these words and the prophecy of Oded the prophet God had a message for them through the prophet God has a message to us through his word that's the main thing uh, don't look for some message in the sky or a message in a dream or something like that. I mean, God can, can use other things, but the, the main way we, we know God has spoken and the way, the way God has spoken is through his word. He wrote it down so that we can know. The others can be messages from all kinds of things. God's message through Azariah, the prophet. Uh, God had done this uh, same thing with Hezekiah in 2 Kings 19. Um, it says, so the, the servant of King Hezekiah came to Isaiah, and Isaiah said unto them, Thus shall you say to your master, Thus saith the Lord, Be not afraid of the words which thou hast heard. So they, they went to Isaiah, and, and they were able to, to know, Thus saith the Lord. And uh, in, in seeking the Lord, the main way you're going to seek the Lord is through the Bible. This is how you'll, you'll know Him. It's not just an emotional thing or uh, some kind of, uh, just a spiritual sensation. It, it's an actual physical seeking the Lord. See who He is and what He has said. In, um, uh, I read to you earlier Psalm 56. Uh, and one, one of the verses there. When He says, What time I am afraid, I will trust in Thee. The next verse says, In God I will praise His word. In God I put my trust. I will not fear what flesh can do unto me. See, when we trust Him, when we seek Him, we seek His Word. We need to find out what God has said. Later in that same chapter, He said, In God will I praise His Word. In the Lord will I praise His Word. In God have I put my trust. I will not be afraid of what man can do unto me. God's Word. That's how we seek Him. That's how Asa sought the Lord. He listened uh, to God's Word. You know, they, they wanted to hear from God. They wanted to know, what does God have to say? And we need to understand, God's Word has what we need. Listen, you don't need another source. Uh, it's not going to come from a seminar or, you know, some kind of uh, human source. It's going to come from God. The second thing he did was he prayed. This sounds like a pattern, doesn't it? Sounds a bit similar to what Hezekiah did. Asa listened to God's Word, and, and then he prayed. 2 Chronicles 15, verse 12 It says, they entered into a covenant to seek the Lord God of their fathers with all their heart and with all their soul. Verse 14, they swear unto the Lord with a, a loud voice and with shouting and with trumpets and with cornets. This is a different kind of prayer meeting than you might have been to recently. 
And all Judah rejoiced at the oath, for they had sworn with all their heart and sought him with their whole desire. And he was found of them, and the Lord gave them rest round about. Uh, they were consciously turning to the Lord. They were actively seeking the Lord. Uh, he, he listened to God's word. He prayed. And then in, in uh, verses 5 through 7, the Bible says, In those times there was no peace to him that went out, nor to him that came in, but great vexa vexations were upon all the inhabitants of the countries. He's just saying it was a time of trouble before they turned back to God. And nation was destroyed of nation, and city of city, for God did vex them with all adversity. Be ye strong, therefore, and let not your hands be weak, for your work shall be rewarded. And this is the point. When Asa heard these words, and he took courage and put away, uh, he was strong. You know, living for the Lord is going to take some strength. The Bible says in, in, in verse 8, uh, he took courage, and then he did something. You know, if we're going to deal with trouble, uh, we need to turn to the Lord, we need to seek the Lord, we need to be strong, and then we need to do what God has said. Uh, he put away idols and renewed worship in spite of the trouble. Now, sometimes when you do something, I mean, you don't know how it's going to turn out. And, uh, you know, they could have easily thought, oh, man, if we turn to the Lord... Everybody's going to turn on us, and we're going to be in trouble. But, but we saw, as we read there, as they began to turn to the Lord, others then began to join them. How can we be strong? Well, it starts with your personal walk with the Lord. You need to take a stand personally. You know, there's times in life when you just have to say, this is what I believe no matter what. You know, there's just sometimes when you're, you're just going to have to take a stand. Um, I mention this pretty regularly because this is a, a common thing in, in Australia. You know, drinking is just a part of life. Drunken behavior is not considered abnormal. And if you're a Christian and say, I'm not going to drink, I'm not even going to have it in my home, man, that can, that can cause people to get upset. But we need to be strong. We need to take a, a stand personally. That, that's not the only thing. Uh, we need to be honest. There, you know, everything that the Lord says, we need to stand uh, with Him in spite of trouble. Depend on the Lord. You know, over and over in the Psalms, the Bible says, the Lord is my strength. The Lord is my strength. In the New Testament, Ephesians 6, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. That's how we uh, need to live as individuals. We need to take a stand personally, not only depending upon the Lord, but obeying the Lord. You know, sometimes we, we look at something and we think, oh, I can't do it. God has said, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Uh, some of you are in university. Some of you are in, in high school and grade school. And others are in the, in the workplace. Uh, listen, there's, there's tremendous pressures uh, to do wrong. There's all kinds of things that we face. We need to be strong in the Lord. Our trust is in the Lord, not, not in man. Obey the Lord. Take a strong stand personally. But notice something. They stood together. You notice in verse 12 there, they entered into a covenant to seek the Lord. They weren't just saying, I, I, I'm the only one. They were saying, let's do it together. You know, that's what a church is all about. God has given us the local church. And uh, a local church is only as strong as, as its members, but uh, we need to stand together. There's going to be times when your stand will help others. And there's going to be times when others will help you. you know, you'll think, oh, they're standing for the Lord. I'll stand too. Uh, we need revival like they experienced uh, in, in verse, uh, verse 15. All Judah rejoiced at the oath. For they had sworn with all their heart and sought him with their whole desire. And he was found of them. And the Lord gave them rest round about. That's, that's something we do as individuals, but it's also something we do together. We covenant together uh, to serve the Lord. Stand with God's people. You know, he sought the Lord by God's word, uh, by prayer, by, by taking a stand, uh, by standing with others. You know, really what, what we're talking about here today is seeing the bigger picture. Life is not just about us. 
let's be more specific. Life is not about us. <laughs> uh, you know, if this were a story, we'd not be the main character. Uh, we're not the main one. It is about the glory of God. That's what life is about. And if we can see that, that will help us. You know, in, uh, in 2 Kings chapter 20, as Hezekiah began to come toward the end of his life, God said to him, Set thine house in order, for thou shalt die. And as I read that, I thought, you know, that's true for all of us. There's people in eternity today that didn't expect to be there yesterday. You probably heard in the news about the airplane that was flying and the window got busted and a lady partially sucked out and, and died because of it. What a, what a strange way to die. And yet, it happened to any, any of us in any way, any time. We could just, uh, watching the, the footy the other day, one of the, one of the players, a young, fit young man, falls over. He didn't die, but a uh, you know, heart, heart problem. That we don't know. A few years ago, I thought I had a heartburn. <coughs> Went to the doctor and said, we're going to have to treat this uh, heart disease. <laughs> heart disease? Who's, who, you got the right guy? You know, we don't know what's, what's going on inside our body. We don't know what's going to happen uh, today or, or tomorrow. Uh, he said to Hezekiah, set thine house in order for thou shalt die. Let me ask you, is your house in order? If you had to stand before God today, would you be ready? Would you be able to say, I come in the merits of Jesus? My sins are blotted out, I know. The blood of Jesus Christ cleanses me from, from sin. In uh, 2 Chronicles 15 and, and verse 2, uh, he talked about Sorry, verse, verse 3. No, here we go. Verse 2. He went out to meet Asa and said unto him, Hear ye me, Asa, and all Judah and Benjamin. The Lord is with you while you be with, me, uh, while you be with him. And if you seek him, he will be found of you. But if you forsake him, he will forsake you. Your choices make a difference. What you do uh, makes a difference in your relationship with the Lord. Someday we're going to stand before God. Will he say... Depart from me, I never knew you? Or will he say, enter thou into the joy of the Lord? The difference is the decision you make about Jesus Christ. The Bible says he's the only way. God says in Romans 6, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. He's saying there's a, there's a choice there. You can either get what you deserve, your wages, or you can get what you don't deserve, a gift of God, paid for by the blood of Jesus Christ. There's a choice there. What will you do with Jesus? In Romans 10, he says, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You see, Jesus is the only way to God. Neither is there salvation in any other. You know, like he, he said to, to Hezekiah, Is your house in order? Is your house in order? Are you part of the household of God? And this is where I got confused. 2 Chronicles 15, 3, he says, Now for a long season Israel hath been without the true God. Our life kind of goes in seasons, doesn't it? There's, there's different times of life. What season are you in? <laughs> the seasons he was talking about here was seasons when you're away from the Lord and seasons when you're with the Lord. Now, as, as Christians, we, we're not teaching salvation by works, but uh, what season are you in? Are you walking with the Lord or not? Uh, are you turning to God and, and seeking the Lord or, or are you without the Lord? And Moses, the Bible says, chose, he made a decision to suffer affliction with the people of God rather than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Satan's season is not very long, and it ends with death. What season are you in? You know, trouble will come. We're all going to face it many times, probably. It would be better to suffer for walking with God than for walking away from God. You walk with the Lord, you, you'll suffer for that. But when trouble comes, let Jesus answer the door. When trouble comes to your house, you go to the door with Jesus. That'll help you. Don't, uh, don't face it on your own. Uh, Joshua said, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. It starts with me. Starts with you. What will you do? 
Is your house in order? Let's go to the, to the Lord in prayer. Father, thank you so much for your word. Thank you for these men who, who turn to you in their times of trouble. Lord, help us as we face the difficulties of life to turn to you. Lord, help us to seek your face, to turn from our wicked ways. Lord, help us to humble ourselves before you. Father, I pray if there are any here this morning that are not saved, that your Holy Spirit would speak to their hearts and draw them to you. Lord, help them to repent and, and be saved by faith. Pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.